Okay, our next keynote speaker is Brian Ballard, CEO and co-founder of APX Labs, a company using smart glasses to create powerful ways for the workforce to interact with the digital and physical world. In his talk, looking at the business impact of smart glasses for work, Brian will share real stories on how businesses are deploying smart glasses into production environments today, alongside insight into where it will all go from here. Please join me in welcoming Brian Ballard to the stage. Thank you, Tom. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for, or to AWE and augmentedreality.org for putting on this uh, fantastic event. Uh, maybe, that, there we go. So speaking for all of Apex Labs, I'm very excited about the announcements we've seen today as it's going to help usher us further into this new augmented world. Speakers here are building the core technologies that we use to create powerful business solutions that we deliver to the largest companies of the world every day. And with each passing day, the capabilities increase and we can unlock greater and greater potential for the connected workforce. And technology, of course, will continue to move this industry forward. But today I'd like to bring you on a little bit of a, re a realization. A realization that we often can't see the grander scheme that's happening around us. Despite all of the advances in robotics and AI and augmented reality, there's another fundamental leap in capability that we are all enabling. And it's a disruption of expectation to your own performance. 10 years ago, a friend and uh, venture capitalist whose job was to look for disruptive technologies told me something. He said, by the time someone's named it, or for instance has a World Expo named after it, chances are the disruption has already happened. And if you haven't seen that, maybe you're the last one to know. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope today, if you haven't seen it for yourself, you will see that the future is already now. And every day I speak with business leaders around the world who are in the midst of a massive transformation. Their world is focused on what it is they produce and how they accomplish it. This metamorphosis goes into the terms like smart manufacturing or the fourth industrial revolution. And what it means in that revolution is that the way the competitive landscape operates today at some of the largest companies in the world is going through a dramatic change. So what problems are, are these, these businesses trying to solve? And I'll give you a hint. It's some of the oldest challenges we've faced. It, wars have started over it. Human history has been rewritten over and over again. It's access. Humanity has always sought greater access, whether it's access to resources, water, land, metals, or now information. Decision making, intelligence, better process innovation. For enterprises, Access to information, better suppliers, better prices, reduced risk, better yield, it's all part of this next revolution. And the realization is that access to critical, inf critical information closer to the point of the decision making can unlock incredible uh, game-changing opportunity. And the way we've made it available throughout history is that that relative cost has been dropping like a rock. Uh, take, for example, something we kind of all know. Uh, my parents' encyclopedia we used to have furniture that it came in. It, the second they ordered it, it was already out of date, probably had thousands of, of errors in it, but it was really only useful inside my living room. My generation remembers tapes, CDs, zip drives, floppy drives, and rewinding was the worst. And now half of us in here can probably shout out, Alexa, play Row, Row, Row Your Boat or something from Frozen. It's uh, proof that I have a two-year-old. Um, the point is the world is changing, and access to information is ubiquitous in our home lives. And as we've heard today, it's become more and more ubiquitous. It's becoming more omnipresent and now more mobile. Uh, a couple days ago, I tweeted a, a photo out of my four-month-old uh, wearing HoloLens. Microsoft tweets back, he'll never know a world without holograms. It's a little cheesy, but it's right. We're, we're in an age where augmented reality is about to change the way we live our lives. It may not be in our everyday routine yet, but it is here. And to the point of my friend, if you haven't realized it yet, maybe we are the last to know. So we're in the middle of it. Now, all of these advances we talk about at home, these, these things that uh, get us out information, access, they're a luxury today, you know, whether it's on your wrist, whether it's on your living room. And like all these luxuries, we love them. We show them off to our friends. We appreciate it when they save us a little bit of time. Take the Amazon Echo, for example. What is so amazing about it? 
it has the exact same capability as my smartphone. I can go to my desktop, I can pull up weather.com, wade through a handful of ads, and finally find out that, yes, again, it is sunny in San Francisco. But it is augmenting my living room. And like my parents' encyclopedia, it is limited by where I am. So for many, the progress of augmented reality is not just limited to an optical system. It is, an, it is a true augmentation of how we engage with the world around us. So computer vision, 3D model overlay, uh, high-speed data bandwidth, these are all features of a far more powerful solution. We're talking about a wearable technology that is becoming the natural interface for how we interact with a now-connected world around us. Most of us have seen the pioneers in this space, whether it was the tens of thousands of people who were Google Glass explorers, or before that, those who were carving up the ski slopes wearing recon-enabled smart ski goggles. But there's a, a lower profile, but highly valuable. This is not a luxury. This is driving a real ROI for the users, and it's the enterprise users of smart glasses. So let's talk about that. Last year, we commissioned a broad third-party study of the enterprise landscape, and we wanted to look beyond what our own customers were doing and, and find out how deep, how long the adoption curve, and what ways were people using uh, wearables, not just smart glasses, in the enterprise. And these are the same people that probably were wearing the ski goggles. They were probably wearing Google Glass, and they took that same knowledge from their, from their home life, and they showed up at the office in the morning with it. But when they looked at the problems they encountered every day, they now looked at them in a different light. They saw them as a problem that was solvable now by in-the-moment access to information. So let's talk about the statistics we learned in the, in the survey we did. 93% of the hundreds of companies, big, small, global Fortune 500, were already exploring wearables in actual business processes. How could they improve the way they work? 86% of them had multiple scenarios. It's not just one guy in a factory. It's the guy unloading the truck. It's every person working on an assembly line. And then it's the technician that's going out and maintaining that relationship with the customer who's bringing that system back up because a predictive maintenance system gave him an alert that it was time for a tune-up. 83% were using multiple wearable devices. This is something that we found really great. Some people watch as the perfect tool. Others, a, a heads-up display. And others, a more immersive augmented reality tool. And 79% of the people we surveyed had started in the last 18 months. So now we're not the last to know. Another thing we found is there's significant adoption among manufacturers. And this is really interesting, because in the manufacturing world, investments all around the people have already happened, for the most part. You have better tools, smarter machines, automated systems that are helping to move different pieces around in the factory. But investments in unlocking the real potential of the human workforce have really not been achievable outside better training programs. If you read the news, you might assume maybe we're about to be all replaced by robots. To the contrary, we are seeing a world where the connected workforce, a workforce where human capability augmented by incredible access to information and machine learning assistance in the workplace, is about to make a, a leap in capability that never saw coming. And for that story, I'd like to welcome a special guest, a man who's been at the forefront of the connected workforce at one of the most prestigious companies in the world, Jason DeStories from the Boeing Company. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you to the event uh, organizers who uh, put on AWE. It's really great, great to get everybody together and hear all the great ideas. So I'd like to give you a high-level overview of the Boeing Company. So Boeing encompasses 160,000 people in more than 65 countries. And this July, we'll be celebrating our 100th year anniversary. In the last 100 years, humans went from walking on Earth to walking on the moon. They went from riding horses to flying jet airplanes. With each decade, aviation, aviation technology crossed another frontier. And with each crossing, the world changed. Boeing and its heritage companies, such as McDonnell Douglas, North American Aviation, Hughes, Jefferson, and Stearman were all part of that history. You can imagine some of the historic legacy at some of these sites. And at my site in Mesa, Arizona, it's kind of interesting because you go in the cafeteria and if you look at the ovens in the back, they still have property of McDonnell Douglas on them. Or if you, uh, if you go out on the production floor, you'll find an old tool that'll have uh, Hughes helicopters tagging still on it that we're still using in production today. So there's a lot of deep history in the sites. But now for the next phase, 
you know, we're leading the edge of a div digital revolution. And what we're seeing is a workforce that needs to be more adaptable, informed, responsive, and empowered to continue delivering quality products in a highly competitive market. And what we found is that wearable devices are bringing power of information to the hands-on worker in order to reduce the amount of time from intent to action. These devices can impact every aspect of the design, construction, and maintenance of our products. So I'd like to show you a video which showcases one of the many applications we are currently pursuing in the realm of wearable technology and the truly connected work. Some people have the impression that wire harnesses are an easy build. They're not. There are literally thousands and thousands of wire typically in a man to craft or a commercial airliner. When we first started this program, we had paper. All the routing instructions came printed out on a big phone book, and the employee had to use a ruler to keep their place, look up, look down, look back, etc. Then we kind of went away from that. We started pulling up our information on the laptops. But looking at the laptop on a constant basis, your eyes are adjusting constantly. So by the end of the day, you've got a raging headache. You have to stop what you're doing and go to the keyboard. You know, you're always kind of looking back and forth. You do kind of lose your train of thought at times. You're like, oh, did I really just see what I saw? And you have to type it up again. We have anywhere from three wires, four wires, to 90, 100 wires to go into one connector. So every little bit of technology really does help. Start wire bundle, scan order. We look for the big changers. Wearables, as an example, is what we would call a step function change. Rather than picking up seconds or minutes, step function change gives us an opportunity to cut the build time by 25%. Okay, Skylight, local search, 0550. We realized we had voice command. And that was huge. You now you have two hands on the product the whole time. You don't have to take anything off. Once you put them on, you'll say, Skylight. It'll show you on the diagram, and then you'll take the wire and you'll just pop it in fast as heck. You know, there's video streaming. If you have an issue, they can see it from their laptop or wherever because you're streaming it through your glasses. Then you can store it. Anytime you pull up that assembly, they can actually watch the video and say, OK, I need to build it like this. This is what the final product should look like. OK, Skylight, local search 186A. What's the room for error in what you do? There is no room for error. In the final product, you have to send it out 100%. It could be your family, military. You can't pull over if something goes wrong, you know. The harness that you're building gives the pilot visibility at night. The harness that you're building gives him safety visibility if something should go bad. You know, you always want to have first time quality. With the wearable, you always know where that wire is going to go. My team's a wonderful team to work with, and we're all very proud of our end product. Skylight and video. Great. And for those of you who have seen the uh, previous release, thank you, the previous release version of that video, um, it showcased an idea, a prototype of the initial application which was internally developed by our talented commercial aircraft support team. This new video, it, it really shows how the technology has disrupted the manufacturing environment today. And so the Boeing company has and will continue to push the boundary on new technologies to meet the current and future needs of our customers and maintain a competitive edge on the products we're delivering. With that, I'll hand it back to Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Jeff. So now we've seen it. The future that we've all envisioned is actually well on its way. We're standing in the middle of it right now. And I hope you've enjoyed a glimpse into how the connected workforce is one of the most fundamentally powerful forces in the fourth industrial revolution. And everyone here has a role to play in this movement. Something you can learn from each other, something you can create to solve a problem that affects thousands, something that can make companies and their workforces competitive for the next 100 years. I thank you guys for coming today. I know I'm holding you up for lunch, but uh, if you see us, please feel free to grab us, ask questions, and if you want to hear more from Jason and other industry leaders, he will be at a panel tomorrow at 1.30. Thank you very much. I hope to see you there. <laughs>